Welcome to the Kart Show, where we look at all things to do with the sport where most F1 drivers start their career. And where better to start than here at Silverstone, the home of British motorsport and the annual trade show known simply as Kartmania. Kartmania as a show was the brainchild of Martin Capenhurst. It's become an important part of the karting season for anyone involved in the sport. Martin, seven years Kartmania has been going now. What was your thinking behind it when you uh, first started this as a concept? I was more bullied into it by some of the exhibitors who were complaining that we hadn't got any sort of a show. And they said at that time, can we get karting magazine to put a show together? And I said, no, I'll have a look into it. And as soon as I said, I'll look into it, they all said, oh, great, we've got a show. And everybody sort of said, oh, Marty's doing a show and it's snowboard. And I went, oh, OK, uh, we'll have a go. And that was the first one then at Stony Park. And uh, we're now obviously at the home of British Motorsport, Silverstone. Looks like a good venue for it. Yeah, it is. I mean, we've made a few changes. The paddock parking for this year, which has been really, yeah, really good for people. And uh, I hope we'll be able to stay here for another few years. It's a central location, ideal. You've got motorsport, you've got cars going around the outside of the circuit all day. And it's got the atmosphere and a great drive through as well. It's about two and a half miles from where you come in and you actually drive all through the circuit and people really enjoy that. Karting came to the UK in 1959 and since that time, carts have changed dramatically. But like classic cars, the old carts are still in use. Tim, when we look around at the historic carts on display here at Kartmania, it really does show how the sport has moved on from back in the 60s to present day, the bodywork changes and stuff like that. Uh, it's amazing to see how everything's developed. But these carts are still raced, aren't they? Oh yeah, very much so. This is not just a show of you know old guys who've brought out their old carts to you know, just to bring along to these meetings. We now have a full season of retro racing with full grids. And it's an amazing spectacle to see these old carts. I mean, we race carts in era in various classes with control tyres and what have you. But it's a very cheap, real motor racing for us. You know, for guys like me who were, you know, racing cars years ago, but then the family comes along, you have to give it all up. I mean, when I discovered historic racing, I mean, I couldn't believe it. I mean, I, get a, I bought a cart, restored it for £2,000, I race it and I spend less than a thousand pounds for a season's racing. Not only do we race, but we do all the big classic events as well, the classic car events. We get invited along, we get a spectator ticket for the weekend, we show our carts, we have a great time. And a lot of the old racers, and I'm talking about the Formula One guys, Lewis Hamilton's father was sitting in my cart two weeks ago. I mean, we get, you know, Nigel Mansell, Johnny Herbert comes along. These are all the racers who started off in car and, and they're suddenly blown away to see the carts they race come along again. Karting, like most other sports requiring a financial outlay, is having to think seriously about finding new ways to offer value for money, with one engine manufacturer offering something unique in motorsport anywhere, an engine warranty. Rotax kart engines usually come with a full six-month warranty in both junior and senior variations, but for engines purchased at this show, that warranty has been extended to a full 12 months. And earlier, I spoke to George Robinson from the Engine Importers Jag about that initiative and how the warranty scheme came about in the first place with an engine that by its very nature is usually being thrashed within an inch of its life on the track. George, the warranty on Rotax engines. Just explain a little bit about how that came about in the first place. I know when you first imported Rotax engines from abroad, you decided to put a seal on the engine. Now that's been quite contentious over the years, but just explain how that seal led to the warranty, first of all. Well, the seal was the, um, the, the first part of the warranty scheme being introduced by Rotax. What they didn't realise when they brought in the warranty scheme that it was actually a marketing masterstroke because so many people have found in karting over the years that engines tend to be unreliable and there's no comeback on components that might fail. Rotax used that warranty scheme to prove the viability of their parts. So they know because they get parts returned whether or not they have an issue with any one item. 
So that has been hugely successful from a marketing point of view, as well as a, a customer approval point of view. And it's pretty, I mean, well, not pretty unique, it's absolutely unique for a racing engine that by, by its very nature, that's being thrashed, isn't it, a racing engine. Uh, just explain why you can offer a warranty and other engine manufacturers can't then. Rotax have a very wide range of engines that they manufacture. They manufacture outboard motors for Evenrude and Johnson, which are wholly owned subsidiaries of uh, BRP Rotax. They also manufacture aircraft engines. The way they produce those engines is to produce an engine that is capable of, shall we say, 150 horsepower. And they'll run that engine to destruction. They find the components that fail. They rectify the components that fail until they're confident with that engine running at maximum power. What they then do is they reduce it by 50%. So the engine is working well within its capabilities. And they put a warranty on it. So from there, we've, we've led to this situation where because the engines are sealed, you have to use a, a licensed engine rebuilder. But because of that, as they replace components, I think you explained once, to, once before to me that as components are being replaced, you could, could effectively have lifetime warranty on the components, can't you? That's very true. I mean, if you get a lot of usage out of your engine, out of your Rotax Max, the, you could have a rebuild once every six months, and the new components fitted at that time are under warranty. So if you have an engine that perhaps needs a new conrod at uh, a year and new main bearings, new piston assembly, all those components are covered by warranty. And so are the components that they might damage when they failed. So if you put a new conrod in an engine, which is the real thing that could really cause a major issue within the engine, then you could get, actually receive a new engine in replacement for your old unit. And, and clearly over the last six to eight years, Rotax has pretty much come to dominate the sport in terms of the engine package there are other engines out there clearly but there is no doubt if you look at the numbers competing Rotax clearly right at the top of the tree in terms of uh, providing the biggest numbers in the classes what do you put that down to clearly the warranty um, is important but I think looking back I remember when the engine first came into the sport the push button start battery operated start on the engine that was a huge leap forward. How important was that at the time, do you think? It was revolutionary at the time. Karting was in a lot of difficulty at the time. I historically go back to, uh, dare I say, the good old days of 100cc racing, 20,000 RPM screamers, but there was massive unreliability in that area. It was very much driver-driven uh, or dominated in terms of the reliability of the product. And the same drivers used to have the engine failures because you had an adjustable carburetor, you had an engine that was, was far closer to the limit of its ability. So when you get 20 starters in a Rotax race, provided they don't crash into one another, you will get, probably get 20 finishers. And in the olden days of karting, how we remember it, it had become very expensive. People were very often disappointed by the performance that they were getting because they had engine failures or breakdowns. So the Rotax brought a, a new level of ease of use and a level of competition that no one had seen before. And so we've, we've got a new customer base as well. The customer base today is no longer the purest enthusiast carter of years ago. These are people that have come through indoor circuits and what have you. And modern, the modern world, people want an instant fix. We want to be able to go into a shop and buy what we want. And that's what the Rotax provides. You buy the Rotax engine, everything comes in the box. So it's not difficult to, uh, to achieve and it's very easy to go competitive racing. If you are interested in starting karting in the UK, then look no further than the Association of British Kart Clubs website at abkc.org.uk. They list every member club and every circuit in the UK, and you may be surprised to find there will be one close to you. So check out the website and find out. After the break, we're back with more from Kartmania.